In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this simple text-based logo design using Affinity Designer. And you'll be able to add whatever kind of depiction you'd like in the center here. I just use the Affinity logo as this demonstration. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Affinity Designer works, be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I'll do in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. Now, I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So to get started, I'm going to open a new document. I'll just press Control N or Command N if you're on Mac. And I'm going to size this document at 1280 by 1280 pixels. We want to work with the square document. And I'll click Create. And I'm going to turn on my snapping icon, which is this magnet icon up here. And I'm going to grab my circle tool and snap the cursor to the center of the page. And you'll know it's snapped to the center when you see the vertical and horizontal guidelines. And once that's snapped, I'll click and drag and then hold Control and Shift or Command and Shift if you're on Mac so we can draw a nice round circle from the center out. And I'll bring it about this far, about 3 quarters of the way through the page. And I will make this black. And what I'll do now is I'll grab the Selection tool. I'm going to right click the circle in the Layers menu and go to Duplicate. And I'll make that duplicate copy white. And then I'll hold Control and Shift and scale this down about that far. And once that's set, hold your Shift key and click on the other layer so that we have both layers selected. And I will come up here to where it says Subtract in the Boolean operations up here. Click on that. And now we have a ring. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the fill. And then I'll come over here to the Stroke tab and I'll bring that slider up. We're going to apply a nice heavy stroke to this object. And I'll bring this up to about 35. Maybe a little less. I'll go with um, 30 looks pretty good. And then I want to duplicate this. So I'm going to right click it in the layer menu and go to duplicate. And I'm going to grab the offset tool over here. And I'm going to, or I'm sorry, the contour tool, I believe it's called. It lets you create offsets. And I'm going to take this handle up here and click and drag it to the right to offset the object so that it's a little larger. And for this one, I'm going to make the stroke smaller. So I'm going to bring this one down to about maybe 20 pixels. And then I'll adjust this even more after I do that. So I'll bring it in about that much. And that right there looks pretty good. Once you have that set, uh, let's convert that to a curve by clicking the button up here that says Bake Appearance. And now we're going to put a couple of tags on the ends here. If you notice in my design, I have these established tags on the sides. So we'll create that next. So uh, let me grab the Selection tool. I want to deselect everything, so I'll just press the Escape key. And I'm going to grab the Rectangle tool. And I'm going to come over here and snap to the center of the document but also to the edge of this circle right here. And then hold Command and Shift, or Control and Shift, and click and drag to create a rectangle about that big. And then I'll come over here, I'll take this end and bring this out to about here. And I want to make the corner sharp, so let's come over here to the Stroke tab and click on the Corner Join option. And then I want to convert this to a curve, so I'll go to Layer and select Convert to Curves. And now I want to grab my Nodes tool. It should be enabled now after you convert it to Curves. And I want to add a new node here between these two nodes. So I'm going to snap the cursor to the center of the document like that and then click right on that path to add a new node in there. And then hold your Shift key and just click and drag that to the right a little bit. Now if you notice, the corner became cut off. That's because of the miter setting. So I'm going to come over here to where it says Miter. By default, I believe it uses 1.5. That's what it does on my document anyway. I'm going to change this to 2. And then that should fix it right there. And if two doesn't fix it for you, try a higher value like three or four, and that should, that should do the trick. So let me grab my selection tool now. I'm going to duplicate this and bring this over here. So I'm going to hold my Option key, or that would be the Alt key on Windows, and click and drag, and then hold Shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis and bring it across your page like that. And then let's flip this horizontally. And then I'm going to hold Shift and just click and drag this over until it's roughly the same placement as it is on the other side. And to ensure that the placement is the same, I'm going to hold Shift and click on the other object. And with them both selected, I'll group them together by going to Layer and selecting Group. And then I will make sure it's centered on the page by clicking this button up here that says Align Center. Now we can ungroup it by going to Layer, Ungroup. 
And now we're gonna we're gonna cut off all of these unwanted areas in there. So let me select everything and let me zoom in. I'm gonna grab the Shape Builder tool now and I wanna apply the subtraction option up here. So click on that. And then let's just go through here and click on the path, click on the paths of the parts of the object that we wanna remove. And it's important that you click directly on the line. If you mistakenly click like inside of the area, it's gonna mess up the entire design. So make sure you're only clicking on the path itself to get rid of it. And then we'll come over here and do the same thing. We wanna cut off this area, cut off this area, and then do the same thing over here. Let's get rid of that and then get rid of that. And now we can grab our selection tool I'm going to select, let's click off of it to deselect everything. If you notice, the caps are rounded, so it's kind of sticking out into this banner here. So I'm going to select that object, and I'll come over here to the cap and change that to the center option, which flattens it like that. And that right there is what we're going for. So now let's add some text in the center, or actually around the edges of this circle. I'm going to create a new circle to place the text on. So let me grab the circle tool. Let me snap to the center of the page again and then hold Control and Shift and click and drag about that far to create a new circle. And the base of the text is gonna sit right on the edge of this circle, so I brought it out about that far. Don't worry about its placement just yet, we're gonna adjust that in just a minute. I'm gonna come over here and select the Artistic Text tool, and I'm gonna zoom in and, and hover the cursor just over the circle until the cursor changes and then click on it, and you'll see it places the text on that path there, and I'm gonna use all caps and write logo design. I'm gonna press Control A to select all of the text and I'm gonna change the font to something else. I'm gonna go with something really legible like Inter. You can also use Montserrat, that works well. For this one, I'm just gonna use Inter and I'm gonna use the black variety. And now I wanna make sure that this text is centered on the top of the circle. So to do that, I'm gonna take this green handle right here which represents the start position of the text and I'm gonna bring it over here to the left until it snaps on the left quadrant. And then I'll take this orange handle over here, which represents the end of the text, and I'll bring this up and snap it to the right quadrant so that we have the start over here and the end over here. And now that the text is aligned to the left, it starts over here. But if we align the text to the center, it puts it directly in the center of the page. And now we're gonna wanna make that text bigger. So I'll just come over here and choose a bigger size, something between 96 and 144. I'll just manually use, let's say, 125, see how that looks. Okay, and what you could do now is, if you notice, the text is closer to this edge than it is to this edge, so what I will do is, I'm gonna grab this node right here, and then just click and drag, and then hold Control and Shift, or Command and Shift on Mac, and scale that down. And I'm gonna bring those letters in a little bit. I'm gonna hold my Option key or the Alt key and use the left arrow to bring those letters in a little bit, just so there's less spacing between them. And I'm gonna try a different size. This doesn't quite look right. I'll go with 135. Let me grab my selection tool and zoom out to see how that looks. And I'd say that looks pretty good. If you need to adjust it, just click on the object again and then hold Control and Shift and scale the circle up and down to place it where, right about where it needs to be. And I think right about there looks pretty good. And once you're happy with the placement, you can finalize the design by going to Layer and selecting Convert to Curves. And now we're gonna place some text down here along the bottom half of the circle. So let me grab my Selection tool, click off of that. Well, actually, we're gonna need the Circles and Ellipses tool. Let's snap to the center of the page again. Click and drag by holding Shift and Control and create another circle. This one, I'm gonna make it a little larger. Place it right about there. Grab the text tool, and then let's just click just on the inside of that path right there, and now we can add some more text. And I'm gonna use a smaller size for this one, so let me bring that down to like 48. And for this one, I'm just gonna write Affinity Designer. And once again, we want this aligned to the center, so let's take this starting point and snap it to the left. Take the end point over here, snap it to the right. And I'm going to press Control A to select all of the text and place it in the center. And I will make this a larger font. Let me go with, uh, I'm just going to manually write in 85, see how that looks. Okay, now let me scale that down a little bit so that it's placed in the center a little better. If the snapping gets in your way, you could turn it off temporarily. Let me try that again. 
Okay, that's right about in the center where I want it. Now I'm gonna press Control A to select it all again. And I'm gonna put some spacing between those letters by holding the Alt key, or Option if you're on Mac, and just pressing the right arrow key a bunch of times to put some spacing between those letters. And that's looking good. Now I can grab the selection tool and zoom out. And now we're going to add some text in here. So I'm gonna put EST over here and 25 over here. So let me grab my text tool again. Just click right in there and I'm just gonna write EST. And let me press Control A to select that all and let me bring in the spacing between those letters. Again, holding Alt and using the left arrow key. And you can even change the spacing between individual letters by deselecting it and placing the cursor between each letter. And you can just manually kern the text that way. So let me take this and snap this about on the center. I'm gonna turn snapping back on so I can do that. And I'll just snap this on the center like that. And I'm gonna make a duplicate of this text by holding Alt and clicking and dragging and then holding Shift and bringing it over here. And for this side of the text, I'm just gonna grab my text tool and then just edit this to say 25 or 2025, however you wanna write it. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Let me get rid of that. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so at this point in the design, you pretty much have the logo set. You can start adding your own graphics in here. So like I said, for my example, I used the Affinity Designer logo. So I'm just gonna grab a copy of that. I have it over here. Let me go to Copy. And then I'll just paste that in there by pressing Command V. I'm gonna center that on the page and then hold Control and Shift and scale that up. You could put anything you want in there. You can even use like the initials for your logo if you'd like. And just for a decorative element, I'm gonna add some stars in here. You can skip this part if you want to. If you notice, I put some stars in there just to fill in that empty space there. Because of the structure of this design, it leaves a lot of empty space. So I'm just gonna add those stars in there. Let me give that a, let me remove the stroke and apply a fill color. Make that a little bigger. Make a copy of this over here. Make another copy of this down here. Make sure it's centered. There we go. And then flip that vertically. I'll make this one upside down. And I wanna make sure these two are centered. So let me select them both. There we go. And now we have that set. So the next step is now we're gonna go and add some color to this design, as you can see I've done here. So let me show you how I can do that, how you can do that. Before we do that though, we wanna convert all of these strokes to paths. So I'm gonna come over here to the layers menu. And if you notice, you see all of these little lines, these strokes that make up the design or the emblem of the design. And I wanna select all of them. I'm gonna choose this top one up here and hold shift and click this bottom one so that we have all four of those objects selected. And I'm gonna to go to layer and choose expand stroke. And then I wanna unify them together using this button up here that says add. And now that is all one object. So I'm gonna, with this one object selected, I'm gonna make it a dark shade of blue, like a navy blue, maybe a little less saturated. And I'm gonna select these objects. I'm gonna hold shift and click on each of them. Or you know what, with this text, let me first convert the text to uh, curves. This bottom text line down here, this is still editable text. We wanna convert that to curves. So let's select that and go to layer and choose convert to curves. Go back to my selection tool and I'm just gonna select all of these objects and make them the same color of navy blue that I used for the other element. I'm gonna press the letter I on the keyboard to get the dropper tool and I'm just gonna choose that navy blue color in there like that. So now to add some color, we're gonna use the bucket fill tool. So let me click off of it to deselect everything. I'm gonna come over here. I wanna first turn off the visibility of the text items. So I'm gonna come over here to the layers menu and I'm gonna turn off the visibility of that text, turn off the visibility of this text, and the same thing with the other text items as well. Turn off their visibility and you may even wanna turn off the visibility of these items in here. In fact, that would be a good idea. So let me turn off their visibility because the way the fill tool works, we're gonna need these invisible. So now let's click and drag over everything so that we have it selected and come over here 
to the Vector Flood Fill tool. It's a little bucket icon. You can click on that to select it. And you notice we get this color disk up here to choose the color we wanna fill it in with. So I'm gonna update this color to the color I'd like to use, a sh an off shade of red. And I'm just gonna click on the area I wanna fill in with that color. And if you notice what I did for this design, I used red out here and then a light shade of yellow for the inside. So let me go and apply that. I'm gonna now choose a different color, lighter shade of yellow. And then I'll just go and fill in those areas as well. So let me zoom in, click to fill that. And you can always, if you notice, this is creating new objects in the layers menu. So if you ever wanna change these colors later on, you could just click on those objects and update their color. And once you're done, you can click off of everything to deselect it and you could turn the visibility of everything back on so that we could see how it all looks. And there we go. And I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating a simple text-based logo design using Affinity Designer. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.